Jesus was a rock star. Anyway, would you pray with me? Would you say, Jesus, help me to be what you want me to be? Do what you want me to do? Because people without you go to hell. The stand, I, you know what I forgot to do? I forgot to put my, my song in, the King Nebby song. I forgot to put it in the list. Should I try to sing it for you? No. <laughs> we, should, we have a vote? No, okay. <laughs> All right, I'll sing it. All right. <laughs> no, stand up, stand out, take a stand for Jesus. Daniel. I love Daniel because Dan, Daniel's kind of like Joseph. We have lots of screw-ups in the Bible that we can relate to, all right? But we have a few examples in the Bible. Daniel and Joseph is another one that these guys just had impeccable character. And, and I actually know some people in my life, it's not me, by the way, um, that have that kind of impeccable character. Like, you look at them and you're like, you know, I know Jesus didn't sin, but you are, you're right close to that. I, I know a couple, not a lot of them. I kind of one hand the people that come across that way to me um, because their, their character is so good. And, but Daniel and Joseph are these kinds of guys. And so they're really great to, uh, to look at because we can aspire to that. That's, what, that's what's possible for us. We don't have to be a screw-up to serve Jesus. Now, the cool thing is, is Jesus will use your screw-ups to serve him. You know, he can bring beauty from ashes. He can take something that Satan intended to use to destroy you and destroy your family and use it as a club against him again, right? He does that. And so he, he doesn't waste any pain. But you don't have to go through the pain to do incredibly awesome things for God either. And it's actually a lot less painful to put faith and trust in God right at the beginning and not be the kind of guy, I had to learn the hard way. Isn't there a song like that? You don't have to learn the hard way, okay? Now, again, the pain isn't wasted. If you've been through some stuff, you've made some mistakes, there is grace, and God will use your past for his glory. (laughs) But I want to encourage you, don't ever think for a minute that you're better for having done stupid things, all right? That's just not the way it is. He'll use it, but you're better. Now, today, we get to talk about um, Daniel and the lion's den. Now, you remember this story from your Sunday school class where they had the flannel board. Anybody have a flannel board in your Sunday school class? Where they would tell the story and they would move the cartoon lions around, you know? And, and they have pictures of Daniel in there. And he's, you know, the lions are cute and cuddly. And they have lions, lion's den toys and stuff. And, and I, But this is, is actually not how it is. Now... I, 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 was, I wanted to kind of give you an idea that these lions are not cute and cuddly, okay? These are, these are, not, these are lion lions. These are not like nice lions. And, and so I went out and I, and I Googled uh, lion attacks. And I found one that is so good that upon better judgment, I'm not going to show you this morning. It was, uh, here, I, 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 I'll just show you the beginning here. Um, you know, the lion trainers and stuff. And... And I had this thought. It's about a two-minute long thing here. And, and um, the lions, they don't stay cute and cuddly very long. Now, nobody actually dies, but it, it gets, it gets kind of ornery. And so here's the thing. I, I don't want to show that to you today because we've had some kids, and I don't want to cause any problems or give you nightmares or anything. Um, but I, I will post it to my Facebook this afternoon, okay? So I'm going to post this video that I really wanted to show you today. And if you don't want a kid to see it or something like that, then, then just don't show them, okay? And then I, I, I absolve myself of, of responsibility. Somebody, so I, I did a wedding yesterday, and a person said, Hey, I'm glad you're here. You can absolve, absolve me of all my sins I'm going to do tonight. And I said, well, actually, I'm not Catholic. I encourage you to go right to the man to do that. Um, but I don't absolve too much. But anyway, uh, and actually, if you aren't my friend on Facebook, I thought this would be, I just throw that up there. Um, it's a good way to stay connected to me and the church. Uh, my, my personal page has got all the stuff from the church on there and stuff. And, and so if we're not friends, that's how you find me really, really fast in case you ever wanted to do that. So Daniel, right now he is serving under 
King Darius. King Darius is the third king that Daniel would be serving under. And Daniel, remember a couple weeks ago, we started out and he was, uh, he was a young man. He was like 14 years old and he does these incredible things. He loved and served God and had incredible maturity and tact even as a young kid. Well, he serves God his whole life. And all and other cool stuff happens, and we're gonna get into some of that in in the next couple of weeks. Um, but King Darius is known in secular human history as uh, being a brilliant organizer. He took what he had and and he he organized it incredibly well. He set up a hundred and twenty. The Bible calls them satraps. They're kind of like governors that were all over the Babylonian kingdom. And over these 120 governors or satraps were three guys. And it was Daniel and two other guys. Now, before we move forward, I I just want you to kind of capture in your head just how cool this is. Daniel is uh, on equal footing with the top three people right underneath the king. Okay? And that's where he's serving. And here is a guy that was taken from his home. His parents were probably killed. His city burned taken as a captive, and they tried to indoctrinate him into the Babylonian religion. They tried to change his religion. They tried to change his name. They tried to change his his values, and he stood strong as a young teenage kid. Wherever his mom and dad were, and we never hear about them in the book of Daniel, man, they, they taught him about God, obviously. He had a sincere and dedicated faith in God. And he's one of these top three guys. Now, one of the things that they, they did is they, they received taxes. They took care of national matters and financial matters. And so Daniel was a smart, brilliant guy. He loved God. He was smart. He was brilliant. And really, that makes sense, right? I mean, he, had, he showed such incredible maturity when he was just like 14 years old. I mean, he already had wisdom and tact and knew how to handle that situation. <clears throat> Daniel 6.1. It pleased Darius to appoint 120 satraps to rule throughout the kingdom with three administrators over them. And one of them was Daniel. The satraps were made accountable to them so that the king might not suffer loss because no king likes to lose his tax revenues. Now Daniel so distinguished himself among the administrators and the satraps by his exceptional qualities that the king planned to set him over the hall, over the hole. And so here you have these three guys, and they're kind of working together, and everything Daniel touch turns to gold. Now, the reason is when you use God's wisdom, God is just smarter than we are. Okay, when when you use his principles and take them as your own, you get to fast forward wisdom. You don't have to be that smart just to say yes to Jesus, but your life will reflect somebody who's much smarter than you are. And so he has the favor of God on him. I think the favor of God comes supernaturally, uh, but the favor of God also comes just because God is better at this stuff than we are. And everything he touched worked. And the other guys, the Bible doesn't say this, but somehow, some way, they just weren't as good at their job. And so... They found themselves in the Babylon Desert Island Survivor Special. (laughs) Because Daniel's being planned to be the last man standing, okay? They're making plans for Daniel to rule it all. One ring, no, one guy to rule it all. (laughs) Three ring to bind them. No, and, and so they begin, they begin getting jealous. Now, this has probably never happened to you because you, I only live in my own head and nobody talks about this stuff, okay? But I will tell you the jealousy inside of me, and that's the only way I've, I've really gotten to know it, it, is an ugly, horrible emotion and feeling to have. All of a sudden, everything that you look at somebody goes through the filter of that jealousy and they can't do anything, right? And, and, and it eats away. And, and I don't know if you've ever gotten so bad that you did something a little bit mean or said something to somebody because you were jealous of somebody. You may be a better man than me. I think I've done that. Um, And and, and it's yucky and it's it's so easy to do. But they begin plotting how they're going to take Daniel down. They didn't want this Hebrew to get all of that power. 
So we need to stand strong. I want to give you three truths to help you stand strong this morning. Because if you are a Christian, you will face opposition. If you love Jesus, you're not serving him if there isn't something coming against you. Whether it's the culture, whether it's the enemy, whether it's the, the, uh, the people in your life who don't want to love Jesus. If you are serving God, you are going to have opposition. You are going to have to take a stand. If you never have any opposition and you're never having to take a stand, I would sift through my life a little bit and ask why. Because if you're serving God, you're going to have these things. So three, three little tips or, or truths. When God raises you up, expect people to tear you down. That's just how it is. There's a I learned this in Norway, actually, and it's actually, uh, I don't know if it's a psychological principle, but I've read about it in, in psychological context, okay? Yes. <laughs> and so, there, it's called crab syndrome. And that is, and I, and, we, and I did this in Norway, right? You put a bunch of crabs in a bucket, and if one crab starts to try to climb out, the other crabs will grab them and pull them down. One time we were, out, we were in Norway out in, in, uh, in, in out an island in a rock. It took three, no, four boats to get to this spot. This is, was quite the commitment to go there for the weekend. And, um, but the, the crabs, when one is doing good, they pull them down and they fight then. Then they cut each other's claws off. But this is called the crab syndrome. When you are doing good, now you might be excited about your faith and you've got a new joy. And there's somebody that wants to give you a shot of reality. <laughs> okay? Maybe, maybe you get promoted at your work. And all of a sudden, people that used to be your friend now are undermining you in subtle ways. Maybe you get blessed and God blesses you. And you get snide comments about how you really don't deserve that. How did you get, how do you have that? Why do you have that and I, and I have this? Maybe you're, you're doing some ministry and, and your ministry grows and then you become a target for, for whatever. Expect people to pull you down because that's just what people do. It's in my heart. And I fight it. It's the most unchristlike thing that can happen inside of me. But the reality is there is something dark and unchristlike in human beings that when somebody else is doing good, there's something in our psyche that says, I need to push you down a little bit because you're, you're, you're making me feel insecure. And that's what happens. At this, the administrators and the state traps tried to find grounds for charges against Daniel. They send out their detectives in his conduct of government affairs, but they were unable to do so. He had too much integrity. They could not find, they could find no corruption in him because he was trustworthy and neither corrupt nor negligent. Neither corrupt nor negligent. They could find nothing on him. Now, you dig into my life, you don't find somebody that's got something on me, Okay. I'll tell you what it is. I'm not too shy about not being perfect. It's easier that way because you don't pretend, you know. Um, but he hadn't done anything corrupt or negligent. He was good at his job, and his yes was yes, and his no was no. And boy, to aspire to be that way. And that's why it really matters that we be consistent in who we are. That we're not one person one place and another person another place. Because you lose this ace in the hole. You give them something to attack you with that actually has some legitimacy. And, and that makes it more difficult. Finally, these men said, we will never find any basis for charges against this man, Daniel. Now check this out. Unless it has something to do with the law of his God. So basically, you know, we tried everything, you guys. We're not going to trip him up unless we can, you know, get, has something to do with the law of his God. Okay, and so they 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 put this and they think about it. They think about it, and then they they come up with a plan. Okay, oh, I should read this first. If you're not ready to face opposition, you're not ready to be obedient to God. And these guys decide. Well, one of them has an idea. Let's. I have an idea. Let's go really kiss up to the king. And I have an idea. So they go to the king and they say, "Oh, king, you are so amazing. You are really pretty much a god. You know." Everybody should be praying to you, not to all these other people. And so, King, you need to make it against the law for anybody to pray to anybody except you. 
and the king is like, yeah, I am pretty cool, you know? And, and you know, I, I get irritated with celebrities. You know, you read about them and stuff. But what would your world be like if everybody told you you're beyond perfect every day of your life for years and years and years? You know, I think you'd be kind of ornery and idiotic as well. So I, I've had a little more compassion for, for celebrities because, you know, when you're king and everybody tells you you're awesome, sooner or later you're going to start to believe it. <clears throat> and so they, what is Daniel going to do? Well, he's got some choices to make. Uh, he can stop praying because what do you do? He'd go to his window and he'd pray. And he could have very easily said, well, God, I'm going to keep on praying, but I'm going to go downstairs and pray. Okay, he, he could have done that. He could have prayed silently. He could have stood in his window, and instead of kneeling, he could have just stood there and looked out over the city and, and prayed under his breath and, and not let anybody know. He could have done that. Um, but what he does is he continues to pray in the way he'd always prayed. How does he have so, such audacious faith? He continues to pray just like, oh, how does he do that? Well, he did that kneeling to pray is what gives you the strength to stand. If you aren't already praying, if you don't have that kind of relationship with your God, you're, not, you're probably not going to stand because that consistency isn't already in your life. I mean, can you imagine if, if, if he hadn't been praying, we would even have this, this really cool story and he'd be just like everybody else. And I guarantee you, he wouldn't be as wise or garner as much favor as he did being a man of prayer. And so he just kept doing what he was going to do. And it describes it a little bit. Now, when Daniel learned that the decree had been published, he went home. He went upstairs to where his windows are open towards Jerusalem. And three times a day, he got down on his knees and prayed, giving thanks to his God, just as he had done before. In response to problems, we shouldn't panic, but we shouldn't be in panic, but we should also always be in prayer. He doesn't announce it. He just does it. He doesn't say, look at me. He just, he just doesn't. He just doesn't do a selfie of him praying. He just, he just does it. He had done it before, and he had pre-decided. He was predetermined to seek God at these times. And when the pressure came, he had the confidence to just keep on doing what he was doing. When the pressure comes, don't find yourself in a place where you're not consistently seeking God. Don't think that you can jumpstart a relationship with God once life kicks you. It, it doesn't work very good. Now, you'll, people come to me and they'll, and they'll say, oh, all this stuff is going on in my life, but I can't handle it. And I'll always pray for you and I'll always encourage you. But you're here today because you're the special ones, right? You're here today, and I'm telling you, if you want to have power to stand in your life, you got to be seeking your God every day. Sunday morning is not enough. Uh, you got to be every single day praying and reading his word and getting alone with him. Today and during worship, uh, that song had a long instrumental in it. And, and that was on purpose. Now, I tell you, uh, when, you, when I'm putting this stuff together, and even now I'm thinking, oh, I hope they're not, I hope they're not getting bored out there. You know, I hope, that, I hope they're not thinking, oh my gosh, why is this so long? The reason, though, I, I left that long time of music is because I want you to experience what it is to get alone with God. I want to try to create an atmosphere where you and Him are communing in a really intimate way. And, and you should be striving for that kind of communion Every day. Maybe you just put on headphones and, put on, and sit down in a room all by yourself. Maybe, I don't know what it is, but you need to be reaching for God like that every day. If you don't have a plan to grow, you will not grow. If you don't have a plan to systematically be pursuing God, you will not pursue God. Because your default is to be a lazy bum and only come running when you need help. That's what we do by default. And, but that wasn't Daniel. Daniel had a regular, systematic way of approaching God. You need a regular, systematic way of approaching God. If you don't have a plan, you're not growing. You'll be stagnant. Now, I, I joke about the spoiled brat, old fart Christians, and that's what happens to these people. 
They serve God for a while. They're probably going to make it into heaven, but their growth has stagnated. And in a lot of ways, they do not reflect the culture and the character, rather, of Jesus. And these are the ones that, that, that give us a bad name. You know, people come to church and they, they meet this grumpy person. It's like, if, if you're what serving Jesus is about, you can keep him, okay? Man, that's not what God wants for you. And we have to be communing with him every day. If you don't have a plan, you're not growing. Don't wait for the opposition to come before you hit your knees. Don't wait for the people, jealous people to come before you hit your knees. Don't wait for the trouble to hit your family and someone to get sick before you hit your knees. Hit your knees today, and I promise you, you will be stronger when that day comes. You're going to be more intimate with your Jesus when that day comes. Be able, Daniel was able to stand because he'd already knelt. There's something about kneeling, too. There's something about kneeling and, and getting humble. In his case, it was very visible. It was his very gentle witness to the people around him. And when you're standing, um, you know, there's just something about getting on your knees and intimate with God. And I, I've done this mostly by myself, but uh, even I've just, in the Bible, sometimes they would get on their faces before God. And I, I have prayed that way. Nobody around, just me and Jesus, but right, right on my face. When you do what's right, you can always trust God with the rest. That is kind of a really good point, just so you know. When you do what's right, you can always trust the rest with God. There's going to come a day in your Christian walk, if it hasn't already, when your way is going to be here and God's way is going to be here and they're going to be in opposition. Maybe you've got a sin that you don't think is a big deal and you're just kind of, just kind of winking at it and everybody else does it. When your way is here and God's way is here, I'm telling you, do it God's way. Because when you do it his way, you can trust him with the results. When you don't do it his way, you can't trust him with the results. I mean, what kind of deal would that be? And people do this all the time. Someone coming, Pastor, this happened and this happened and my life is just broken and I, I prayed about it and I did this and, they, and blah, 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 blah. And, and they'll, they'll tell me, and I'm, they're mad at God. I'm mad at God, and, and, and I've had this conversation, you know, it must be hundreds of times. I, I, I'm mad at God, and, and, and well, is God the one that had you rob that store? <laughs> you know? I mean, what did you, I mean, how is that God's fault? Um, how is it God's fault that you cheated on your wife? <laughs> you know? How is it God's fault that, that you, you know, that, that you started drinking and you drink too much. How is, you know, and we people do this all the time. And, it's, and I'm, I'm, I'm more gentle and have more tact than to tell them what complete buffoons they are. But that's buffoonery, you know, to, to do it counter to God's way and then whine about the results. But we do that. We do that. You know, you, you whine about, I, I had a guy, this is a bunch of years ago, and um, Actually, I, I, I shared with you about him about a month ago. This is the guy that said to me, I decided to leave the church, and, and uh, I just wanted to see how long it would take for one of you pastors to just call me. You know, you idiot. Um, but the same, same dude. And, um, but he was feeling disconnected. And, 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 and he was, oh, I just, I just don't feel a part of the church anymore, right? Okay, uh, I'll give you a hint. If you came today at... Uh, 10.05, and when you leave today, you're going to bolt right out that door, and you don't come to our picnic on uh, Sunday, and you don't come to the New Life Center, and when we get the small groups going again, that you're not, you can't really whine about not being connected, right? I mean, that's, that's, that's not my fault. <laughs> I can't magically connect you in one hour of you standing here looking at me and not interacting with any people around you. And you, you, have to, you have to be available to be loved. But this is what people do. This is what we do. We, we, tr- we do things our own way, and then we get mad at God for the results. And that don't work. But when you do do it God's way, you can trust him with the results. That's kind of awesome, too. Because when you do do it his way, and then things are hard, and they always will be, okay, 
They always will be. That's just, that's just how this thing works, you know? Anybody, any preacher told you different just wanted your money, all right? The way this thing works is the hard times come, but when God walks us through it with us, it's just, it's just so good. You can trust him with the results, and I can rest in that, you know? And, and there's a learning curve to it, but when financial tr- troubles come, and you say, well, God, I did everything I knew how to do. I, I, I handled my finances the way you told me to handle them. Okay, God, you have to have a way out, out of this and through this because I'm going to trust you with the results. Whether it's your kids, your job, if you don't get promoted and you are not following the principles in God's word of being a hard worker and having good work ethic and not looking at the people around you but going above and beyond at every opportunity to bless your employer, well, that's not God's fault that you missed that. But when you have done all of that, and some of you do, and you are so awesome, when you have, when you've prayed, when you've been a good witness, you haven't cussed out anybody for a long time at work, when when you have been, when you've been a a good, and you've done it God's way, and and, and you've represented him well, and then that other guy gets promoted ahead of you, now you can just go to God, okay, God, you must have a plan. You must have a plan. And he does. He does. And when you've been with him, see, because when you do what's right, you can always trust him with the results. And when his way and your way are in conflict, I promise you will always have so many good reasons why your way is better. Every time. You'll be able to come and tell me them. Pastor, yeah, I know that the Bible kind of says to do this, but here's all the reasons why my way makes sense. And there'll be good reasons. And I'll tell you, yeah, those are good reasons doesn't change anything because God's smarter than you and he sees, he sees further ahead than you do sometimes missing those opportunities can be the best thing that ever happened because he had something better for you he had something better for you so when your way and his way are in conflict I, I beg you for your own sake to do it his way because he loves you he loves your kids more than you do he cares about you and so I'm telling you, do it his way, even if it's harder, even if it doesn't make any sense, even if it looks like there's just no good way for this to work. I promise you, he sees further than you do, and he sees better than you do. 80 years, he's faithful. So then Daniel is taken to the lions, okay? He does what he does. They say, hey, look, king, look what he did. And the king right away knew he'd been manipulated. Because apparently there was some obscure law in the books in Babylon that once the king pressed his ring to his seal, not even the king could retract the order. And so the king is now painted into a corner, and they take Daniel to the lion's den, and Daniel doesn't fight. He just goes, and he goes in the lion's den. And King Darius, uh, now he knows he's been manipulated. Now he knows he's been taken advantage of because he liked Daniel. He actually respected Daniel's God, even though he, apparently he thought he was equal to it. But, of course, this experience humbled him. So. And so that morning, King Darius runs out. He runs to the, where the lion's den is, and he, said, and he says, Daniel, Daniel, are you still alive? And he even says this, did your God save you? That's actually kind of cool. Darius, in his sinful state, was able to recognize, he's, he's finding out that Daniel's God is able to save him. I hope he did. And then Daniel shouts up, May God, my God has sent his angel and shut the mouth of the lions. Now, can I paint a cooler picture for you than the flannel board real quick? I know I'm almost out of time here. But the flannel board, they're just sleeping at Daniel's feet, right? That's not what the Bible says. All right, All right give me this for me. Okay, that's not what the Bible says. The Bible says that the angels held their mouths shut. <laughs> you ever hold your dog's mouth shut? They don't like it. Okay? <laughs> now, what you mean it now? I, I, this, I, I'm not crazy, right? Okay? Uh, they, they, weren't, they weren't like the paintings. All right? They weren't peacefully sleeping at his feet. No. The angels were holding their mouths shut. And they were ticked about it. Okay? That's a much cooler picture, don't you think? Than them sleeping at the... Somebody paint that. That deserves to be painted. Anyway. um, (coughs) They have not hurt me because I was found innocent in his sight. Nor have I ever done any wrong 
before your majesty. Well, the king was overjoyed, and he gave orders to lift Daniel out of the den. And when Daniel was lifted from the den, no wound was found on him because he had trusted his God. Now, another really cool part of the story is that all those other guys, and actually their families, were thrown into the pit. And the Bible says that they were torn apart before they hit the ground. Go read it yourself. They were torn apart before they hit the ground. Which means those angels, I mean, those lions were angry. They, well, you know, he, your dog is pretty irritated with you after you've been holding their mouth shut for a while, you know. And don't look at me like that. You, you try, if you haven't done that to your dog, it's a blast. Anyway, give them a treat. They don't, they don't hold a grudge. That's what's nice about dogs. <laughs> I'm going to pray in a minute. And first off, I want to pray for you if you're here today and you haven't done it God's way. Your life hasn't reflected um, Daniel's at all. And I want to encourage you with something. Would it have been better had you served God from the time that you were a kid? I'm telling you, it would have been, okay? But he doesn't waste any pain. And whatever you've been through, there is grace and favor and salvation for you right now today. See, we don't get to go backwards. We only get to go forwards. That's all we get to do. But God is so able. If you've made mistakes in your life that have had a negative impact on your kids, I want to tell you, it's not too late. It's not too late. If you have uh, situations in your life where, where things have been broken, it is not too late. And so I'm going to pray for you today. But the key is, is that right now today, you say, God, your way. We sang that today. That first song, your way. Your way. God, I lay my life down. My life is not my own. I belong to you alone. And then the the uh, the the thing in the middle says, Your way, your way, your way. You have to say your way to him for this to work. He can't fix your life unless you yield. If you don't if you don't allow the doctor to work on you, it's not you can't get mad at him for your that you're still screwed up. Okay? I can't get mad at my eye doctor because I didn't go in, <laughs> okay? You have to yield. You have to, you have to give it to him. And so I'm going to pray for you today that, that if that's you, that you would yield. Uh, also, if you're here today, maybe you are facing some opposition. I'm going to pray for you for wisdom and tact to handle that gently and firmly. You see how Daniel was gentle and firm? He wasn't in anybody's face. He wasn't aggressive about it, but he was who he was. And he wasn't changing for nobody. And so I'm going to pray for for you today. And if you pray with me to give your life to Jesus today, I encourage you just to put a cross on that card today. And it just says, Scott, I gave Jesus my life today. And nothing happens. It doesn't go into any database. It just makes my heart leap when I look at those cards later to hear that you're making a choice to serve God. Lord, I thank you for this church. Lord, I thank you for this incredible group of people. And I pray, God, that you would put your hand on us in a new and special way. And Lord, that I pray for anybody here that has found themselves in a situation of their own doing. Lord, uh, and maybe it's not all that was their doing, but God, I just pray, Father, that I pray that we would come to you as we are and we don't get to go backward. And Lord, when you forgive us, you forgive us completely. And so, Lord, I come to you today, and I pray that every heart here would, and say, Lord, please forgive me. Lord, forgive me for those times when I've been jealous and petty. Lord, forgive me for those times when I've, uh, when I've not done it right, and I haven't represented you well. God, please wash me and make me like you. Lord, we prayed it today, and we said, Jesus, help me, because I can't do this on my own, God. I am utterly powerless against what faces me. But so Jesus, help me to be what you want me to be. God, I pray that you crawl into my heart, you put your finger in there, and you change whatever you need to change. Lord, if there's pride in there, I pray it would be done away with. God, if there's insecurities in there, I pray, God, that you, you'd allow my faith to grow, that I put my faith and trust in you. God, whatever it might be, put your finger on it, God, and make changes. Lord, I pray, God, that you would do that. Now, some people here are having to stand up in the face of something. And Lord, I pray that you would give them courage today and that you would strengthen them today. And Lord, I pray that we would live a life that would invite opposition like Daniel did. 
Lord, not like an idiot does, but like Daniel did in being consistent and being rock solid in his competence and his faith in you. God, please help us to be like Daniel. And Lord, when that happens, I pray, Father, that, that we would, when that opposition comes, that we would just stand strong. Lord, that instead of just praying under our breath or going downstairs to pray, God, I pray we'd stay at our window and we would take a stand and stick to it. In Jesus' name, we love you, God. Thank you for the good things that you're doing. Amen. Jesus was a rock star. 